Hey guys, good to have you with me. Uh, DM Scotty here. Uh, welcome to DM's Craft. Um, I now have, have over 400 um, subscribers. Uh, that's great. Tell all your friends um, about the, uh, the fun crafting you can have on uh, DM's Craft. Um, I also have a, a Google Plus page, uh, DM Scotty. Uh, I'd love to have you join me on there and uh, I can talk a little more in depth or answer questions more in depth on that page. So I'd love to um, have more friends uh, to talk to. And uh, some people have sent me pictures. I'd love to see the pictures. It gives me ideas as well as you guys. So uh, it's a great, great kind of open forum for that. And um, let's uh, move on to the episode. Uh, this episode, um, I had a, a viewer ask me um, about doors, and I've kind of touched on doors a little bit in other videos, uh, but I thought I would do um, a short video kind of showing an easy way to do doors. There are lots of options for doors. Um, some of my videos I've actually shown um, some Hearst Arts doors that I've used. Um, I actually didn't have the mold for those doors. I just bought the doors from someone on eBay that had molded them and, and sold them. They had molded them with resin instead of the uh, uh, standard uh, casting plaster or the dental plaster. Um, so they were much more sturdy. But I got them there. You could see, so that would be an option. You could get them there. Also another option is um, uh, Mage Knight makes some pretty nice little doors uh, that they had in their dungeon sets, which were their dungeon sets were just basically doors with um, little chips that you would put in a, in a map, and you turn the chips over, and it would be like an encounter. Um, but they had like they would have four doors in the um, in the set, and those are pretty cheap on eBay, so those are easy to get. So that's another option, uh, which I'm going to do a video on that to show uh, how to spice those up a little bit. Um, but in this video, I'm just going to show you the, the cheap and dirty way to make doors. Uh, you can always make doors 2, 2D, uh, kind of like the tiles, you know, make, instead of make, cut a little piece out for the wall and they can, you know, slide open as the door, to show the doors open. Uh, but I always prefer to have my doors 3D. Um, it just makes it a little more dramatic and it's kind of fun because um, I always put 3D stuff on the, on the flat tile. Um, so what I'm going to kind of do is show you a basic way to make doors. Uh, today and um, you can extrapolate on this technique to make all kinds of doors. You can make um, anything from you know a castle, a large castle door, uh, to a cathedral door, um, to just a small you know hovel uh, door. So uh, let's go ahead and to the crafting table and uh, we'll get started. So I did this little sheet to show you kind of a basic layout. So the basic door is going to be this um, for just a standard um, rectangular door. Um, I basically use a piece of rectangular um, cardboard. Uh, depending how thick you want the door, um, you can do, use different uh, thicknesses of cardboard. So if um, you want a thick stone door, you might want to use standard cardboard. But if you want a, a wooden door, might be nice to use the the the, uh, the thinner cardboard. Um, so what I do is I just so here's the anatomy. So I cut that out and it's I do an inch and a half tall by an inch wide. Um, so that's pretty standard door size. And then I use um, I put a base on it, um, and um, that's out of cardstock. Then I usually put a couple pieces of cardstock banding on the door itself. And then I usually put a little bit of cardstock around the edge of the door to hide the, uh, the uh, corrugation of the cardboard. So up top here, you'll see a couple variations. This is like a, uh, a rounded door. So you just do this same kind of door, just cut, cut the top off, and you can, then you can just bend the cardstock around the top. Um, this one here is more like a cathedral door. So um, I just uh, put the cardstock around that way and just bend it around. Now this one here, Kind of actually looks like a window, but this, um, if you wanted like a sturdy double door, um, you could make two doors, um, two rectangular doors. And what you could do is use, put banding on it with um, cardstock. So this you could paint, depending on how you painted this is how it would look. So you could paint this like the wood texture in here and then paint the uh, gunmetal uh, banding. Or you could just paint the whole thing gray and it would just be 
it wouldn't be so much banding as it would be just uh, detail. So, um, and you could do that for all these doors to change. It's easy just to change a regular door um, to a, uh, to a, to, you know, whatever type of, uh, whatever kind of texture you want, wood or um, stone or metal for that part, for that matter. Now, if you wanted to, um, you can always change up these doors. You could make uh, two, uh, you could put a line through the center here and make a giant cathedral shaped door um, that had two doors that opened. Um, and if you wanted, you could do, what I would do is put each of these doors on a separate stand so you could open them up. Um, and that's generally what I do for each door. I put on a separate stand. Okay, so now I'll show you the pieces that I have and uh, we can talk about construction. So these are my components for my regular door. Um, this is a half, an inch and a half tall by an inch wide. Uh, here's the base that the door is going to stand on. So it will be like that. And I made the base uh, the width of the door so that it can open easily. It'll fit in the the space that I leave open for the uh, the door in the tile. Now this here is my banding. This is two sixteenths of an inch wide that I cut. I just measured it on uh, cardstock and cut it out. So the banding will go um, around the door like this, and it just hides the uh, corrugation of the cardboard. And I'll cut that off, and then I'll put two bands across the door uh, to give it some detail. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So uh, glue this up and show you that. Now the base, um, I don't immediately glue to the door because what I do with the base is I'll paint it um, with the texture paint. So I will uh, paint it black, spray it black, then spray it with the texture paint. And then I will attach the door on after I finish painting the door, I'll, I'll glue it to the base. That way, um, I can I can actually paint this with if I painted this try to paint this after it get all over the door so that's really an easy way not to get it all over the door so then the base will match whatever dungeon um, I'm creating so you know be it cavern be it be it stone or dirt I can make it uh, match so uh, I'll uh, construct this and then we'll have a look at it. Here's my door I've glued together. Uh, so it's just the uh, just a piece of cardboard. Uh, I glued the um, cardstock around the edge, and then I glued um, two uh, bands to the door, which I'll paint. I'm going to make this a wood door. Um, now, um, when you're gluing this, what I do is I use the um, small glue gun. So you want to use this glue, this size, so you have a better um, accuracy. Uh, and less mess when you're doing along the side. You don't want glue all dripping all over the place. So the small glue gun definitely helps with that. Uh, the bands in the center, I just use uh, the Elmer's glue on those. Uh, it almost it bonds almost instantly uh, to the door. The, well, I don't use the glue um, around the edge because I want it to stick really well. So the glue gun makes it um, almost instantly stick to the edge uh, very well and securely, whereas the glue you'd have to hold it. But since there's no uh, there's no stress on the bands when you're gluing them to the door. The glue, the Elmer's glue works uh, much better. Uh, it's a lot easier to use than trying to glue a bead of um, hot glue across there and then get it get it right. You can put the glue on the on the band and then put the band on the door where you want it, as opposed to trying to um, hold that little teeny piece and put hot glue on there, trying you know, and not burn yourself. With the door, it's a little easier with the glue gun because you can just glue the edge you know, with a glue gun and then put the piece down and then glue the edge and then put the piece down. And this is all one piece and then glue the edge and then bend the piece down. So um, this has something you can hold while you're gluing where the bands, if you try to hold that little band and glue it with the glue gun, um, you're probably going to burn yourself. So my suggestion is to use the, uh, the, uh, the Elmer's, the white glue, the Elmer's glue all and put it on the band and then put the band where you want it. So. That'll save your fingers and uh, just make your life easier. So now, like I say, I'm going to paint this, and then I will glue it to this to the stand when I'm done after I uh, put the texture paint on the stand. 
So uh, there we go. There's our basic door. And uh, we'll paint that up and see what it looks like. Here's my door. Uh, it's uh, all base painted black. So now what I want to do is I'm gonna, I want to lay down a uh, coat of dark brown. So I'm going to use a burnt umber and uh, just a large brush. And I'll just apply that on there. So there we go, all done. We'll just let that dry and then we'll move on to the next uh, detailing step. So I've got my door here, it's all dry. Um, now what I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use a nutmeg brown to uh, give it uh, some variation in the color. Um, I'm gonna kinda make it look like planks in the door. So what I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use uh, this brush and it's kind of rounded on the end so what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'm gonna dip it full strength not wet into the paint and then what I'm gonna do is just kind of um, drag it down like that So that almost gives it like a planky look. See that? And that's wet and it'll dry. So, uh, but now uh, I'll do the other. I'll do the other side, and then we'll move on from there. So my uh, my planking on the door is dried. So you could even add a little bit of a uh, touch of black to this if you want. So. Um, Get a pr fairly thin uh, brush, uh, some wet down blank, and you could just draw along the edge there. Kind of gives that some definition. I could also uh, use this brush and do a little bit of uh, separation between the boards. So I could do. Um, that kind of thing. To kind of give it some uh, some more definition. So let me show you that there. And that's totally optional. That's not something you'd have to do. Okay. So now I want to do a little, uh, now I'm going to do a little highlighting. And now I'm going to do a little highlighting. These are extra st uh, steps you wouldn't really, really wouldn't have to do, but if you want to add a little extra oomph to your door, you can always do this. Um, so what I'm going to use, like, I'm using a light uh, cinnamon color. It's kind of a light brown. So I'm going to um, grab the door, and I'm going to try to accentuate the, the edges of the planking a little bit. So I'm going to um, take my uh, brush, and uh, I'll try to show you this best I can. And I'm just kind of going right next to the the black that I put down. And that adds just a little bit of extra oomph to the um, to your piece. So 
So uh, there we go. Uh, that's kind of what that looks like. So that make, gives it that wood texture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up with the banding. So with the banding, you could just paint it like wood, like I did with the planks. Um, but I like to add a little extra detail uh, to most doors, uh, and to add some like uh, like iron banding or metal banding. So I'm using some gunmetal color, and uh, this is the size of my brush, and I'll just get that in there. And uh, I'm just using this full strength, and I'll just paint those bands. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Um, now also, um, I like to, for this door, I'm going to paint around the edge. I'm going to band it around the edge also. Uh, you couldn't, you wouldn't have, to, wouldn't have to do this. You could do um, just a wood color, but I'm going to go for it. Okay, so that's what we're looking like at this point. So it's a nice little door that's just out of cardboard and cardstock. Now the last uh, the last um, thing I need to do is just attach it to the uh, base, and it'll be ready for play. All right, we're down to our last and final step. Uh, we're going to apply the door to the uh, base. So I just cut a base that's exactly the same size as the door, uh, and I use the texture paint. And I'm applying it last because I didn't want to uh, screw up the texture paint, the texture paint while I was while I was uh, making the door. So uh, I'll just glue the bottom of the base there. And then I will apply that to the base. For a sec and there we go our completed door another little thing you could do uh, one last little thing uh, is you could take the door and take a uh, your thin brush and do a little black on the bottom there give a little bit of shadow on the door That's a nice little effect. I'll show you that up close. So, little last little detail if you want to do that. So here we go. I've got a standard figure um, next to the door. Just wanted to show you the scale of it. I think it came out really nice. Um, these are super cheap to make, cardboard and cardstock. Um, just paint it up. Uh, you can make as many or in any shape as you want like I was showing uh, earlier in the video. Um, I'm also going to show you another door I did um, that's made out of stone and I'll show you that now. So here we go. Here's a much larger door and this was a stone door and just basically used the same techniques just in a bigger format. Um, I painted the banding as uh, stone instead of uh, metal. So, um, so these can open separately, so they could go, uh, put the figure there, so you could have it like that, and, or like this. So then the characters can go through the opening, um, or close and everything. So, um, that's a nice way you can do double doors, and those are an example of stone doors. And, um, so, uh, go forth and use these techniques and make all the doors you need for your dungeons.